Hey, how's it going guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to insert push button to your mapper love graph. Alright, so here's the uh, example I'll be creating in this exercise. Here I have a very basic looking bar graph. Below the chart, I have two push buttons. And the data is coming from uh, this table right here. So if we look at this table, we have three records. And basically, I configured the push button to iterate these three records. In terms of the data set, I'm using NYC Open Data License Applications data set. And I'll link the link in the description below. And here's what the uh, table looks like. So basically, I take this data set, I clean out the data into uh, this format. And I exclude data that is now in year 2019 to year 2021. Now let me close this Excel file. All right, so if I click on uh, the next push button, it's going to go to the next year, which is going to be 2021, followed by 2019. And the previous button is going to go back to the previous year, of course. All right, so let me close this window. We're going to uh, start everything from scratch. All right, so I'm going to uh, import the libraries first. Here, let me increase the font size. All right, so I'm going to import the mapperlib.pyplot module. And this is a little bit too big. And to import the data set, I'm going to import pandas module. And to import the uh, push button widget from my parallel that widgets, I'm going to uh, import the button class. And it should be from. All right, so here uh, let me import the data set from the CSV file. And I'll put the sys file on the right. And it's going to be char data dot csv. I want to uh, specify the index column. And it's going to be a uh, issue period column. So this represents uh, each year. Now I need to import the labels that I'm going to insert to my uh, X axis. And this will be coming from the columns header. And for each row, I'm going to call them records. So here I'm going to grab the first record. And from the DF object, I can retrieve the first record by the index name using the uh, lock method. And here I'm going to uh, Use the index method to reference on to retrieve the first index. And because I intended to uh, rename the axis label, so I need to create a, a array object uh, to specify the axis label position. And I can create a range object to set the axis title position. All right, so if I print uh, each array object, And this will have so far. So here we have uh, the index. Basically, it's going to be the x axis label. And the record basically containing just the uh, numbers followed by the axis position index. And it's going to be 0, 1, and 2. Now let's create uh, the bar graph. Here I'm going to type plt.subplus. And I want to set the figure size. Let's do uh, 7 by 6. Next, I'm going to create my bar graph. This is going to be position followed by uh, the values. And here I'll name the outputs bars. So basically, the bars object represent uh, each bar 
associated to uh, each value uh, in a record. Now I'm going to update the x axis uh, label using the x text uh, method. And this will be the position followed by the labels. I also want to insert the chart title. And this will be x star set title. And the title will be coming from the record index. And we can retrieve the index name by referencing the name attribute. All right, so if I plot the graph, and this is what we have so far. Now I want to create some space. Here, let me put the chart back. Now I need to uh, create some space or area that I can insert the uh, push buttons. So here I'm going to put uh, this uh, graph on the right. All right, so first I want to push the graph uh, up a little bit. So here I'll reference the POT object dot sub plus underscore adjust. And I want to push the graph up by uh, 0.2 inches. And the graph will now look like this. All right, so we have the area that we can insert the push buttons. Now we need to create uh, the areas. Okay. So this will be create button, oops, buttons area. And to create the area, we're going to create two uh, rectangles using the pot.axis method. Inside the axis method, uh, we're going to specify the uh, left value and I'll set that to 0.58 and for the top value it's going to be 0 0.05 and for the uh, width it's going to be 0 0.15 and for the height it's going to be 0 0.07 so as you came out with these numbers by playing around with uh, different geometry setting so this is going to be the area I'm going to place the uh, previous push button and I'll code uh, the output x underscore uh, prev. And this will be next. And I'll grab this statement. And I'll just make a copy. And here uh, I'm setting the push button width to uh, 0.15. So I need to increase the uh, light value by at least uh, 0.15. So I'm going to use uh, 0.75 as the uh, light value to insert the uh, next push button. Now if I create the graph, now these two uh, rectangles are where I'm going to insert the push buttons. Now let me pull over the documentation uh, for the widgets. All right, so if I search for a uh, button, And it's right here. Now let's look at the syntax real quick. So by default, we need to provide an access option, a label, and color and hover colors are optional. And some other uh, parameters that you can uh, play around with it. And to insert the button widget, I'll reference the button class. The first parameter is going to ask for the x object, and it's going to be x prev followed by the uh, button label, and it's going to be previous. And let's insert some colors. For the button color, let's use green. And for the hover color, I'm going to use blue. And I'll name the output button uh, prev. And I'll make a copy and I'll rename the object to button next. And this will be x next. And this will be uh, next. And for the button color, uh, I'm going to use orange. And for the hover color, uh, let's use uh, red. At this point, if I launch the graph, 
we now have the uh, push buttons created in our graph. But if I click on the push button, and nothing's going to happen because we haven't uh, implemented the functions to link to those push buttons. And let's create the uh, methods to link to the push buttons. All right, so here I'm going to create a class. I'll name the class as index tracker. Inside the index tracker class, I'm going to create an attribute called index. I'll set the default to zero. And the reason why I need to create a class to work as a, a function container is because, let me show you right now. So when we connect a method to a push button, we need to specify uh, which signal we want to link the function to. And for the push button, I believe that this only onclick signal. Let me check. Oh, so there's a onclick signal. And then there's a disconnect signal. But the signal is only used uh, when you want to disconnect the uh, push button from the function itself. As for the onclick signal, here let me reference the uh, signal. So when you embed this onclick signal to the push button, and when I click on the push button, and the onclick signal is going to pass an event. And unfortunately, uh, I cannot capture the event using a function. So that's why I need to create a class to work as a, a function container. And I'll show you how we can use a class uh, to work as a function. All right, so inside the function, I'm going to create uh, two methods. Previous. And next. And both functions are going to capture uh, the signal from the onclick event. All right, so here let's do this. I'm going to print the event argument. And I'll create an instance of index tracker here. And I'll call uh, the object index. And I'll call the object current index. And I'll assign uh, the object to the onclick signal. Then I'll reference the function I want to fire. Oh, I've got the colon. Now, if I launch the graph, and if I click on uh, the previous push button, and based on the building uh, signal, uh, this event argument is going to print uh, the inflation associated to the uh, graph. Now if we want to update the bar graph, so we need to uh, update the index attribute first. So for previous, it's going to be uh, minus one. And for next, it's going to be plus one. Now I need to figure out uh, from my table which index I need to reference. And the solution is pretty easy. I can basically take uh, the index value divided by total record size and I'll just take the remainder. That will give us the row index uh, to which we need to reference from this table. And to retrieve the record, here I'll reference the uh, df object dot look. And this will be df dot index followed by the row index. And to update the yeah. and to update the uh, bar value, so we need to reference the boss inside the uh, boss object. I can say for i, i stands for uh, index and the bar object. And I'll generate the index by using the enumerate function followed by providing the bar's object. And to change the bar height, I'll use the set heights method. Then I can reference the value from the record object followed by the index. And to update the chart title, I'll insert the x object dot set title.
and the chart title will be coming from the record name. And from, I'm going to reach out the graph. Now I'll take uh, line nine to line 16. And I'll copy uh, the same exact code block to the next function. Now going back to the unclick signal, I'll make a copy and I'll change the reference. And this will be next. And that's it. All right, so let's do a test run. So currently the data is sitting on 2019. And if I click on next, and notice that uh, if I hover my mouse to touch the push button, uh, the foreground is going to change to red. And here have a typo, uh, this should be self. Now let me try again. If I click on next, the bars are going to update to uh, 2020's data, followed by 2021st. And if I click on previous button, it's going to go back to the previous year. All right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to share in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video useful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.